Yo, what is going on, everybody? This is RBT, and welcome back to another episode of the NCAA Football 14 Coaching Carousel Dynasty Series with the Penn State Nittany Lions, where we are currently the offensive coordinator looking to have a spectacular finish to the season. So hopefully, at the end of this year, we can get a pretty good job offer as a head coach somewhere and then build a dynasty from there. But today, dudes, this is the most important and the biggest game of this series thus far as we are traveling to Michigan State to take on the undefeated 3-0 number 8 in the country, Michigan State Spartans. First few weeks have gone okay, but I'm not really sure if I'm confident in our play that if we were to play exactly how we played in the first couple weeks, in the first couple episodes, that we'd be able to win at Michigan State. So hopefully I'm proved wrong and we play our best game of this series thus far. So if you guys still are enjoying this series, and if you are, make sure to drop a big thumbs up. Let's see if we, once again we can smash 2,000 likes on today's episode. Be sure to subscribe if you are new, and turn on the notification bell if you haven't. Make sure to go follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. Link in the description box below. As soon as we do hit 10,000 followers, getting extremely close, we are going to be doing a console giveaway. But with that said, let's jump right into the episode. So just in case you were wondering, we did skip the game against Kent State. We did get the win. It was not really like as big as a win as I wanted to. We were actually losing at halftime, but had a big second half to get the win. 38-23, which like I said, I'm not really happy with it, but hopefully we play better this week. If you look at our team stats, we outgained them. They had over 100 yards rushing. Is like That's not what I like to see. Kent State being able to run for over 100 yards on us, but keep in mind, I'm just the OC. I'm not the defensive coordinator, so really what happens on defense isn't on me. But offensively, McSorley had a pretty good game, 261 yards, two picks. So I'd like to definitely not throw two picks every game. Rushing yard-wise, Sanders had a massive game, 146 yards and two touchdowns. And rushing-wise, we had Koontz, our tight end, with his biggest game of the series thus far with 106 yards. But unfortunately, and kind of surprising, Shorter, the receiver, the true freshman receiver, has been having an incredible season thus far, only two yards. So hopefully he bounces back this episode. Now showing you guys some of the notable scores from week four. South Carolina did defeat UCF, who was ranked, I think, like 13 in the country. A big win, 31 to 9, and UCF drops to 18. From what I've seen, there's not that many surprising scores thus far, but number 14 UCLA barely gets a win over New Mexico State by one touchdown at home. Now this is an upset. Texas State takes down Texas Tech by one in Lubbock, Texas. Texas Tech, that was their first loss of the year. Crazy score right here. Number five, Michigan, one of our division rivals, only beat Kentucky, who has not won on the season 20 to 16. We play Michigan in a couple weeks. I think this is gonna be next episode's game. Now I'm kind of worried because the team we're taking on Michigan State absolutely demolished Notre Dame, who was a top 10 team last episode, and they destroyed them at Notre Dame Stadium, 38 to 15. So hopefully, like we can play a little bit better in today's episode. So a couple crazy scores back to back to back. Louisiana Tech beats Kansas by 16. And I know it might not seem the craziest, but it is a power five school or a non-power five school traveling to a power five school and beating them by 16. Georgia only beats North Texas by 10, but Syracuse loses to FCS Midwest and win any team in college football or in the FBS loses to an FCS team, that's just a little wild. Florida absolutely demolished Tennessee in that rivalry game by 25, 35-10. Louisville does get the win over Florida State, and they remain undefeated on the year. They're 17 in the country, so watch out for Louisville. Louisiana Monroe beat Baylor in Waco, Texas, 31-17. Another non-Power 5 school getting a win over a Power 5 school. Miami, Ohio beating their in-state team, Cincinnati, 24-7. Auburn demolishes LSU in Death Valley. Arizona State gets a pretty big win, or I, it was a narrow win, but a big one over Stanford. And last notable score, because this is a pretty big rivalry game, BYU absolutely demolishes Utah, 38-13. So looking at the top 25 poll, Alabama, Ohio State, Oklahoma, and Washington all stayed the same. Notre Dame, who was absolutely demolished by Michigan State, the team we have to play this week, dropped from 5 all the way to 13, I believe. Michigan jumped up to 5. We are now number 7, Miami up to number six. Michigan State only jumped up three spots. They probably should be ranked ahead of us at this point, but it is what it is. We'll see who wins out of this week. Georgia, number nine, Clemson, 10, USC, 11. And let's see if there's any other notable ones. UCLA still undefeated. Memphis, Memphis, number 16. Louisville still undefeated. UCF dropped, they only dropped five spots after losing to a team ranked lower than them by like 22 points. So that's a little crazy. Mississippi State, 19. Oregon still undefeated, but only at number 20. And Northwestern's undefeated, and Arizona State's undefeated. And last thing to look at before we jump into today's massive matchup, 
players of the week for week four. Right outside linebacker CC Jefferson from Florida had a big game against their rival Tennessee in their big win. And Houston's quarterback Derek King had a pretty massive game. Six total touchdowns in their absolute demolition over Ice 48 to 14. Now that said, guys, it is time. Traveling to East Lansing. Hopefully to get a win and uh embarrass MMG. Got to start this game off quick and hopefully with the score on this first drive. We're getting the ball first. No dumb mistakes, especially on this first drive. Just going to scramble here with McSorley. That guy caught up with him extremely fast. But, hey, guess that's the level of talent, you know, going from the last couple games we played to Michigan State. They're a pretty good team. But hopefully, man, if we get this loss, like I'm telling you, dudes, I want to get the best head coaching job offer possible. And for that to be the case, we have to play it. We have to win as many games as possible. And hopefully we can get a national championship game. But Sanders, maybe we just rely on the run. Last episode when we played the game, the running game up the middle between the tackles was so effective. Maybe that is the move. Maybe that's the meta. I can't remember. I didn't even know what meta meant when I played NCAA. I was like four. But I don't remember exactly what the the meta was. But maybe it's just running the ball in between the tackles. Maybe that's the case with our the strength of our offensive line. But uh, we'll try our best just to run the football and see if we can play effective so we don't make any dumb mistakes. Because if we make some mistakes, to some interceptions, which you guys know I'm prone to do at Michigan State, we're not going to win this game. Definitely not. They played that absolutely perfect just slide. Okay, the last thing I need is for my quarterback, my star quarterback, Trace McSorley, like a 92 overall to get hurt or for him to fumble. No turnovers. Like, if we turn, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this out there. If we turn the ball over more than twice this game, it's a hundred percent fact we're gonna lose. Cause I just our defense is good and all, and it's the reason why we won earlier in the series when we probably should have lost against a bad team because they just kept holding the field goals. But I don't know if we'll be able to do that against Michigan State. RB open down the seam. That's gonna be Polk. Polk. Oh my! The what just happened? Okay, crazy play. Brandon Polk, 56-yard touchdown. Those kind of plays really make me question Heisman. Like, Heisman is so hard at some times, you can't make it any harder. But then, like, at times like that, I don't know what to say. Because you guys see right here, it's on the highest, like, possible difficulty. So, I mean, it's hard at times, but then times just like that, you're like, dog. That was, I think a dead Pelican could have made a better angle to the football there. But look at our defense, man. Why did I why did I say I, was, I don't know about our defense? Our, def, our defense has done nothing in this series, on this season, to make me feel like they're not good enough to stop a team like Michigan State. I don't know why I said that, but maybe I'm just doubting them because I don't have control over them. So running the ball to the outside, which I've already said is not in the meta, but hey, we picked up five yards. And what I do want to try to do in this game is if for some reason the running game ends up slowing down, I do want to bring in that faster freshman running back, which you guys have been dying to see in this series and see how effective he can be with his burst to the outside. Now look at this. I have a good feeling. The three down linemen versus five offensive linemen. This is going to be a first down easy. Easy money. Pancake all day. Seven yards. Bank on it. Miles Sanders, ever since the first game, has turned up quite nicely. It looks like he's, I mean, he's a star running back. I mean, I'd like to, I'd like to, I'd like to mix it up a little bit more. But as of right now, we really don't need to because with him, we have the redshirt senior. Well, I mean, we should. We have a lot of talent. We have him, redshirt senior. We have a true freshman. Maybe we need to get the redshirt senior a little bit more time, but at the same time, we need to do what's best for our team. Maybe we have to start him the rest of the season because Miles Sanders is dead. He just got absolutely destroyed. Josiah Scott, that is murder. Somebody needs to, like, he needs to be arrested for some type of, like, criminal action. Like, that, that was, that was kind of nasty. So uh, let's not run the ball with him again because he probably has a concussion after that play. So second down and 11. Hey, he's still in the game. But uh, let's look for shorter here on the slant pattern. Just kidding. A is wide open on the little curl route. That's going to be Brandon Polk. Nine-yard reception, third down and two. Let's see if we can do the dang thing here. I'm going to do with I'm gonna do what works. Running the football right up the middle. I mean, I don't think we haven't got more than two yards on a play running the ball up the middle, so why not keep it going? Third down and two. They're only bringing, they only have three down linemen. They're bringing the safety. Let's flip it to the other side. Safety's bringing pressure. Back up a little bit. We're going to have it. We're going to have it. Miles Sanders picks up 10 yards. First down and 10. Penn State 
Nittany Lions, and I must say, dudes, like, this has got off to a pretty good start. We're playing pretty good football early on in this first quarter. Controlling the game, no dumb mistakes. This is the type of offensive football as offensive coordinator. You run, you're going to get a good job offer. So play action pass here. I'm about to get sacked, about to get sacked. Big man coming. X was wide open for a touchdown. Oh, my God. I was too worried about trying to scramble away from that guy. Oh, my. I don't know if I'd be able to throw on the run like that, too, but oh, my God, dude. If I make that throw without pressure, that's a touchdown. That's easily, that's easily 14 up in Penn State. If we get this win, we probably should be propelled into the top 10. But, hey, I'm speaking way too early. But I just, I'm confident. It's different to being confident and cocky. A's open. Okay, things are getting a little sketchy. As I get cocky and say I'm confident, we are two bit plays in a row we got pressured on. So let's go back, spread, go shotgun, let's go bunch quads. I like this formation. Interesting formation. I don't think this formation, I could be completely wrong. I don't think it's in Madden, but it's an interesting one. Bunch quads to the right. Let's see if we can do the dang thing here. Pick up a massive third down. Oh my. Why? Three straight plays, man. See, now that one was my fault. I'll take credit for that one. I, I waited a little bit too long before I pulled the trigger. Like, technically, like, no pun intended. I didn't pull the trigger in time. But, uh, yeah, dudes, maybe I just run the football. Maybe that's the move. Maybe we just run the football all game long. But that would, I mean, <laughs> same time, I'd probably get kind of boring. But, hey, just run the ball, control the clock, get the win. I mean, our defense obviously is playing pretty well. But, um... We've known in series that our, our defense plays well in the first half and they end up screwing up in the second half and, you know, starting to get up yards there. So we need to try to take as much of a lead as our, while our defense plays well um, while we can before things go downhill because, you know, with my luck, sometimes it's just the known fact that things are going to go downhill eventually. But while we have the chance to take them, make the most of these opportunities. So play action pass here. McSorley. I'm getting, I'm getting a little jittery. Why? Down the, that's a pick. So, I don't understand why they drop so many interceptions. You guys see it in the Carl Weezer series, and you guys see it in this series. Like, it's Heisman. The toughest difficulty in the game. But for some reason or another, like, they just drop so many picks. I'm not complaining. I'm happy about it. But just I'm just going to acknowledge it, that it is a thing. They drop a lot of interceptions, but I'm happy about it. Counter here. Miles Sanders picks up about seven yards. Sets up for another third down and short. I think I'm going to keep the ball on the ground, guys. This pistol running game is working pretty well. And like I said, running the ball every play might be a little boring. But, I mean, I'm trying to get as many points as we possibly can while we still have, you know, see if we can make this a two-possession lead. They blitzed, bounced it outside. He's just not fast enough. But Miles Sanders, I think he got it. Miles Sanders, I yeah, he did get it. Five yards. What a, what a like a run. I didn't think he was going to get it. They blitzed. And we did the thing. I'm proud. I'm happy about it. So here we go, boys. Let's at least try our best to get a field goal on this drive. If anything, just get a field goal, make it a two-possession game while we have the chance. Bringing our guy out in motion. Okay, oh, I do it! No, 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 no. I'm an imbecile. Gosh dang it. I don't know. I, I, first, I saw the guy wide open, and for some reason, I thought the running back was staying outside, which he was going to be wide open, and my mind just, that's my bad. Gosh they're going to score. It's a fact. Field goal. See, our defense is... It's not even me while we're winning these games. My defense just keeps us in the game by making our opponent just continue to kick field goals. I apologize. I'm a freaking idiot. Should be 10 to nothing. But let's see. Big play. The big play. B, down the field. That's another that's an throw. That's another pick. That should have been two picks in a row now. I'm, okay, so this... All right. Second chance. We have a second chance. We threw the ball so effectively in the first game, and I just have turned into an imbecile the past two episodes, and I've not really been able to throw the ball, ball that effectively. I've been more reliant on our passing or our running game. But, I mean, okay, that's bad. That's really bad. So third down and 12. And keep in mind, too, for some reason, big 12 or big 10 games are always really weird low scoring games. So if this ends up being a 10-6 to 6 game, I mean, a win would be a win in our part, but, like, that's not abnormal for Big Ten schools. But I say that. Hopefully it's not a 10-6 game, because that will be a little bit, like, not fun for you to watch. But I don't want it to be that close either. Oh, my. So we can hit Y. Need a perfect throw. That's a pick. Oh, I'm doing it. 
I told you guys, if we turn the ball over more than twice, we're going to lose. It's just a fact. Matt Morrissey with the interception. Come on, defense. Come on, defense. They scored and took the lead. Oh, God. They scored and took the lead. I told you guys, turnovers is what's going to be the difference in this game. If I keep doing stupid stuff like that, then we're going to lose. Oh, unbelievable, RBT. Absolutely un freaking believable RB that shorter with the catch that's all we got to do just short little out routes short little passes don't look for the big play don't roll out I don't know why it's I did not even click hurry up so I don't know why this is a thing but it is a thing so we'll just roll with it maybe that's God telling me that this next play is going to be a deep touchdown so with that said I'm going to believe in nature believe in God and throw a fly route it's going to happen just kidding nobody's open at all so Polk with the catch he's dead but a 10 yard carry but I guess we do need to hurry up a little bit but I'm not, not in too much of a hurry but I mean if we can avoid like not using all the clock in the world we can do it we still have all three timeouts no hurry I just want to at least have a tie ball game going into half and keep in mind too they do get the ball at the start of the second half uh oh X on the slant that was to the slant okay McSorley I'm a little disappointed at the inaccuracy there should have easily been a first down but hey that's the first, I think that's actually the first inaccurate throw he's had all season long. So I'm not going to just nag on it. Just, just, hopefully that doesn't happen again in another bad situation. Hopefully we pick this up here. Hopefully we do. We barely, okay, I thought for a second that was about to be bad, but it wasn't. It was good. We pick it up. First down. Keep in mind, too, in college, the clock stops after every first down. So we can be a little, not have to be way too rushed here, but at the same time, I just, I don't want to run out of time. So first down and 10. Oh my. B. What an underthrow. Bro. Okay. McSorley something's up. Mc, that was the worst throw I've ever seen in my life. The safety bit in. He was wide open in the field. And McSorley threw it like 20 yards when he needed to throw it like 40. Okay. I think my foot could have thrown that ball a little bit farther. But once again, McSorley, you've been good. I'm going to keep the faith. I'm going to keep the faith in you. It's, that was just a couple play thing. Now we can't run the ball. Miles Sanders negative two yard rush. We've got we're moving the ball like the first like we're getting one two first downs a drive, but we're not we have not been able to finish drives this game. Not making me a happy camper. So here we go, third down and twelve. I'm probably using a little bit too much clock here, but screw it, I guess. I mean, as I'm saying this, I'm still using too much clock. Probably should have called timeout, and my controller disconnects. Maybe this is not a good thing. Oh, things are going bad, dudes. Things are going bad. 25 seconds. We've got to start using timeouts after this play if we even pick the first down. 20 seconds left. Koontz. Koontz is covered. RB. Why? Oh, we need to... Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, McSorley, not the greatest of first halves. 4-13 going into halftime. Michigan State, this is our defense. Oh, God. Down at the one-yard line. That's unfortunate. Uh, let's not get a safety here. Let's just not give up a safety. So, just be smart. Be smart. Be smart. Not, don't get sacked. McSorley, just run. Run like a fast man. First, <laughs> dog, I was about to say first down. That's a crazy looking first down if that was a first down. But is it second down to nine? From the two yard line, like, at the same time, I want to be smart here and just try to just, like, not give up a safety. But I don't want them to like just commit to the run and just have to punt the ball right back. So, like I said, man, eventually they're gonna keep start, start uh, scoring touchdowns. But hey, maybe we just run the ball every play. This is what we. Hey, dudes, I'm a, I'm just gonna be. I'm gonna run the ball until they stop me. Because obviously, for some reason, right now, maybe it's my dumbness or my inability to be a good player, or maybe both of them combined. I I'm not able to throw the football effectively right now. That's just my bad. I'm just an awful player, and you guys know that. But I'm gonna do what works. I'm going to do what works and just run the ball right at the middle. I mean, that's our strength. Just play to your strength. I guess that's a, that's one of the smart things about being an offensive coordinator. It's just playing to your team's strength. Apparently, we can run the ball right up the freaking middle. So let's put some more blockers back there. Let's go full house here. Keep pounding the ball right down their freaking throats. Because I'm not having a good game. Mix Foley's not having a game, but good game. But, hey, offensive line and our running back Sanders is. Right up the middle again. Big play. Dragon defenders for 14 yards down the field. Miles Sanders, six yards shy of 100. Our offensive line is getting extremely exhaust exhausted here. Let's go. Well, maybe that's God again. I was trying to run that play action deep pass. I accidentally clicked A. Hence why we're running a halfback dive once again. 
and it actually would end up being perfect because they blitzed so the safety was going to be up and I could have been like if I had a deep route running like deep right oh my god that fly route from B was about to be wide open but it's going to be okay it's going to be okay uh, I'm just uh, kind of upset I'm a little upset but just roll with it got to just got to stay positive right second down and 12 now we're going to run the play action pass maybe it was meant to be to wait this long so play action the running man is perfectly covered Throw the ball away. Oh my, that was... See, that's one thing that's different about into the play. Man is like, you can't throw against man. Unless your receiver runs a really good route, you cannot throw the football against man coverage. It is super OP. So here we go. Third down and 12. Going to try to see if we can fit the ball in the seam right here. Four verticals. Third and 12. We need 12. Big time. B. Oh, that was the B. Oh, this is insanity. This is insanity. That, okay, uh, all right. I don't know how to think about that. I don't know if I'm happy or upset. Dog, that ball was to the right receiver. The ball, that was to, that was to the man on the right side of the ball. I mean, right side of the field. Like, I can't even fathom what just happened. Um, let's go back. Let's go back and talk about this. Let's analyze McSorley's throw right here. This is who I threw it to. This is who I threw it to. It goes to this man. He was covered. But for some reason, this is not a good defender. And I need to key on him. Dow. I need to key in on him the rest of the game. Because obviously, he's not a smart guy. As our defense comes up once again with a big stop. And I just want to try and score again here. So we can just make this a two-possession game and not have to stress in the fourth quarter. I mean, basically what our team has turned into is just big plays. Either big play or bust. Because we can't have a consistent drive. It has to be big plays. B's open again, man. Please. Please, please, Johnson should have been a pick. Like even in that scenario, B had some space down the field. He had a little bit of a um, dog. What's the word? If basically what I'm trying to say, if McSorley could have thrown the ball a little bit farther down the field, he could have ran into that full sprint, might have been able to get a touchdown. But McSorley, like, okay, I admittedly I know I'm having a bad game, decision making wise. But McSorley's having a bad game, freaking like physically, like not not good, dude. Everybody's on the right side of the field here. This is a big play. Sanders. I like it. So if he's a little bit faster, that possibly could have been a lot better than a 20-yard rush. But hey, that puts him over 100 on the game. Let's try that again. If Michigan State's defense keeps, like, being stupid in the way they line up, if they're literally going to line up everybody on that side of the Okay, they're not doing this time. Literally everybody was on the right side of the field. Let's try it one more time. Run it to that side. Sanders doesn't get anything. Get two yards. Get two yards. It's better than losing one. And it's better than one. Better than getting nothing. So, you know, stay positive. So, second down and eight. Do I continue to run the football? No. Because I just don't want to. Run another play action pass. And I guess look deep. Because that's the only way we can freaking score. Is throwing the ball deep and throwing it. Basically, throw the ball to the safety. And we're going to score a touchdown. That's what happens every time. Oh, my. Oh, bad. Bad. Mix will Throw the ball away. Third down and eight. Third down and... Five of 17. That's not the greatest. Hopefully, like, coaches or universities don't look at me and, like, offer me a job based on our quarterback's accuracy and completion percentage because, as of right now, it's not the greatest. So, third and eight. And look for Shorter here. Shorter with the catch. Maybe I should have keyed on him. He was kind of covered well there, through it regardless, because he's a good guy. Maybe we just throw it to him. I have a, I have an urgency. An urgency here. I'm going to throw the ball. Okay, so this is entertainment. Entertainment here. A down the scene. Bring Johnson on the curl just in case he's way too covered. I'm feeling shorter here. Shorter on a deep play. Yes. 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 Please. Please, shorter. Why did the man not try to catch it? Shorter, we have to have a talk. Okay, so when you're wide open down the field and the ball is coming to you, it's more effective if you actually put your hands up and try to catch it. I'm actually extremely upset. I thought all that was about to work together and me throwing the ball deep was about to make me look like a genius. It was about to be a touchdown. And he decided for one reason or another not to put his hands up. So I'm a little upset about it, but hey, gotta keep chugging along. Miles Sanders run up the middle, third down and four. Six yards. Do I, I just, I don't, uh, do I go for a short pass or do I, I rely on the, I'm, a, I'm gonna rely on what's been consistent. 
Run the ball once again right up the middle. See if we can pick up four yards. If we don't, I might go for this because we're out of field goal range. It's like a 55-yard field goal at this point. So I might just go for this. The draw, they were right there. Fourth and five. I'm going to go for it. I think. I am, I guess. Dude, okay, so once again, maybe that's nature telling me to go for it because I'm telling you I did not, I did not run a hurry up, but it is what it is. This, this could be the play of the game right here. Fourth and five. Let's do the dang thing, boys. Polk's going to be open. Polk's open. Don't make the play. Polk. He got, he stopped me. One yard shy. Nice play there from the defender to close in on the ball and make the open field tackle. I'm scared of Sim. I'm scared of Sim. Michigan State is going to score a touchdown to take the lead. Three points above your Penn State Nittany Lions with five minutes to go. If Justin Shorter could have caught a wide open touchdown pass and put his hands up, it would be a different story. Now I'm just upset about it. Now I'm upset. We're getting pressured. We get sacked. Oh, God. Everything's going bad now. Everything. Mike. Mike Panasuic with his first tackle of the game ends up being a sack. I'm worried. I'm getting a little worried. I <laughs> don't, don't necessarily like being a worried man. But I'm getting a little worried. Second down and 18. Oh, gosh. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's be happy. B. He's open. We need a dot. That's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. Tompkins, he dove. DeAndre Tompkins, I don't care if he dove. Thank God, at least you'll put your freaking hands up. 8 of 21, not the greatest. But, hey, I mean, if somehow we can find a way to win this game, dog, I don't care if, if McSorley was one of negative seven. As long as somehow we can find a way to put up points right here and get this win. This, uh, we just, let's complete a drive. Let's stay consistent on this drive and complete it. Score a touchdown. Score a touchdown. At bare minimum, kick a field goal here. Why am I going hurry up? I really don't know. I'm just kind of like, kind of impatient. Maybe that's the word. Feeling a little impatient. Maybe that's a bad thing, but at the same time, maybe it's a good thing. That literally made no sense, but I'm going to roll with it. So slants here. Slants A. Right over the middle. That's going to be Koontz with the catch. Breaks a tackle. Ends up being a bad thing because he ran backwards like three yards. But hey, I mean, at least we didn't throw an interception, which is normally a good thing for me. Do I do I go back to the running game? No. Go back out of spread. Or do I? Go trips right. Let's go. I accidentally ran. I, dude, I'm pressing the wrong button so many times. We're running the ball. Didn't mean to. Marcus Allen, first play of the game. The redshirt senior. Do the dang thing, my man. Big play here. Allen with the first down. Mark Allen, I apologize for the blast of me of accidentally calling you Marcus. But he does pick up a first down and keeps the chains moving. Now I'm getting hyped, boys. Three minutes to go. I might as well just try to chew some clock here. If we do end up scoring a touchdown, they'll have to get on the field in a short amount of time. It's a read option here. Made the right read. Sanders with the first down. Keeps the chains moving 11 yards as we inch 11 yards closer to the end. That's 135 yards for Miles Sanders in this game. Let's ride the read option train. Read option worked for his last game. Maybe that's the move. We've only ran it a couple times this game. Mark Allen back in the game here. Let's see. The bid in this time. McSorley has a ton of space. Let's slide. Make sure he doesn't get hurt. Make sure he doesn't fumble. Read options working like beautifully right now. So three minutes to go. Let's actually... Let's change it to chew clock. Let's chew a little bit of clock here and keep doing the dang thing. We'll, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Going to run the read option again. Sanders back in the game. <sighs> I don't want to fumble. It's okay. The right read. Sanders up the middle. Going to pick up the Nittany Lion touchdown. And I think we found the basis of, an, of our offense moving forward. Read option. Roll it down the field as we do take... A, what should be pinning the extra point a 21 to 17 lead what is our defense gonna do here big stop big stop we get the big stop now it is time to try and choose some more clock if we can choose some clock get up one or two more first downs it's gonna be a gg no matter how bad i played specifically a win at the end of the day is all that matters, especially at Michigan State. So here we go, my guys. Third down and four. We are in field goal range. A field goal does actually give us a touchdown lead. But that we good give them the chance to go on the field and tie it. But hopefully we can pick this up. Miles Sanders up the middle. Somehow, some way, ugliest game of the series thus far. We find a way to do the gosh dang thing and come out of East Lansing, Michigan, 5-0 on the year. So easily... 
the ugliest game of the series thus far, but thank God for our defense, and maybe it makes me look bad, but hey, at the end of the day, guess I'm a team player, as we do get the win, 21 to 17. Brandon Polk was our player of the game, five receptions, over 120 yards, two touchdowns, big plays are what pretty much won us that game, big plays in our defense coming up clutch, so defense Overall, why is actually worse than their offense, but at the end of the day, hey, they played well. So final stats, not the greatest. McSorley, 9 of 22, 270 yards, two touchdowns, two picks, two consecutive games. He's throwing two interceptions. Not very, like, promising, but what is promising is Miles Sanders, our junior running back, having a massive game, 6.5 yards per carry, 169 yards, and a touchdown on 26 carries. And once again, Brandon Polk having his biggest game of the series, 141 yards on five receptions, two touchdowns. But two really like slow games back to back for Justin Shorter. Maybe he's telling off. Hopefully he'll come back pretty solid next episode. We had a massive jump in the top 25 poll. Jumping up all the way into the top five at number three with our win at Michigan State. They dropped from number eight to 11. So not a big drop from them. So notable scores from the rest of week five. This is an interesting one. Number one, it's a rivalry game. Number two, Minnesota won at Iowa in overtime 14 to seven. That was Iowa's first loss and Minnesota is still undefeated. So maybe look at one of these two teams to be a dark horse in the Big Ten. So not only is UCF no longer undefeated, now they've lost two in a row and are no longer even a ranked team. Lost to Cincinnati 23 to 21. Nebraska is just having an awful season. Lost to Indiana, who we played this week 27 to 24, and they fall to one and four on the year. FCS East beat Ohio nine to nothing. What a score! And Ohio is now 0 and four, which is mental because in my Ultimate Player Career Series. Ohio went undefeated and came like this close to making the national championship game. And in this dynasty, they're own for losing to an FCS team, getting shut out by them. And talk about a fall from grace as Notre Dame goes from two weeks ago being number five to getting shut out at home against who is now number one in the country, Oklahoma, 38 to nothing. So maybe Notre Dame was never even that good in the first place. No wonder they lost to Michigan State so bad. Another team who was having a horrible season, North Carolina starting off the season 0-4 after they lose to Syracuse by seven. And another team having a horrible season, Florida State, who now loses at home to Boston College to fall 1-3 on the year, and they're winless in conference play. And once again, Michigan barely surviving against a not-so-great team. They're still ranked number four, but we will play them next episode. And we, like, they were undefeated and all, ranked number four, but I still feel like they're not that great. They barely beat Army at home, 38-31. Like Although, granted, Army is 3-1 on the year. That was their first loss. So Georgia last week obviously had a pretty close game, but this week they demolished LSU 24-3. They're back up to number 6 after getting beat by Clemson in week 1. And LSU is not having the best of seasons either. Lost two straight weeks and are now 2-3 and three on the year. So no wonder Oklahoma jumped to number one. I mean, they did beat Notre Dame by 38 points, but Alabama lost to Ole Miss by seven at home. And Notre Dame jumps up to number 17 in the country. Alabama actually lost. Mental. And looking at the top 25 poll, once again, three out of the top four teams in the country are all Big Ten schools and all in the same division in the Big Ten. So this is going to be an incredible finish to the year. Oklahoma, like I said, is still number one to jump all the way up from number three. Michigan does even, they have a number one vote. We do have a number one vote too. I'm just like noticing that. They have a number one vote, although like they're barely beaten, not great team. But anyways, USC still undefeated, but not getting a lot of love, only ranked number eight. The next undefeated team is UCLA at number 12. They have a Memphis at 14. Washington actually was ranked number four last week. They lost to Arizona. So another top five team losing, dropping all the way to 15. Louisville is still undefeated. They got a 22 point win against Florida International. Moving along the game all the way to number, I don't know how they're still ranked after losing by 38 points. Oregon undefeated, 4 0 on the year. And you have Northwestern also undefeated 3 0 in the year. And that does it for undefeated teams in the top 25 poll. And to finish off today's episode, Week 5's Player of the Week is funny because the Defensive Player of the Week is Khalil Hodge. Like a pretty, apparently another pretty good, like, Buffalo defender named Khalil. He had a good game against UConn. They actually beat UConn 45 to 24. And UConn still hasn't won a game on the year. And then Bryce Love from Stanford had a massive game, 160 yards and three touchdowns with their massive win at Washington State. So, dudes, that is going to do it for today's episode of the Coaching Carousel Dynasty here on NCAA Football 14. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy. And if you did, make sure to drop a like. Let's see if we can smash 2,000 likes on today's episode. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new and turn on the notification bell if you haven't. But with that said, I'll catch you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. God bless and peace.